This is the story of the slave trade between Europe and Africa, a tragic tale of coastal villages raided and men, women and children carried off into captivity, loaded onto ships, taken to be sold as slaves in another continent and never seeing their homes again. A familiar enough narrative, except that in this case, the villages being depopulated in this way were English, and the slave traders arrived in ships which had sailed from Africa. Long before the British ever became involved in the slave trade, slavers out of Africa were raiding not only the British Isles, but many other European countries. From Iceland to Malta, Ireland to Spain, and Italy to the Netherlands, carrying off white slaves to be sold in the slave markets of Africa. During the 1970s, the British held hundreds of political prisoners behind barbed wire without charge for years on end. This could have been embarrassing, putting people in mind of South Africa and the Soviet Union, had we not decided to call them internees instead of political prisoners. This solved the problem so well that even to this day, many people don't know anything at all about the political prisoners of the 1970s held in Britain. The same thing with Barbary pirates. The word pirate is faintly comical, bringing to mind Long John Silver, Captain Hook, even Captain Pugwash. Pirates raised a skull and crossbones flag and hunted for treasure, didn't they? The Barbary pirates were actually after people, white Christians specifically, who could be sold as slaves in Muslim countries. Here are some white slaves in Africa during the 17th century. There was a very old tradition of slavery in Africa, long before the coming of Europeans. Black empires enslaved neighbouring nations, various tribes made slaves of outsiders, the Arabs took black people for slaves, and sometimes the other way round. Slavery was an old African tradition, and it is not to be wondered at that it flourished on what became known as the Barbary Coast. Of course, everybody knows about Europeans going to Africa and taking the people off into slavery. It's taught in schools. White slavery is not so well known. The Barbary coast was named after the Berbers who originally lived there and included countries like Algeria, Tunisia and modern-day Morocco. From ports there, Muslims set off to Europe to see, seize as many white Christians as they could for the slave markets of North Africa. How extensive was this trade? Was it a trifling affair of a few hundred people here and there? Hardly. The island of Gozo, part of modern Malta, was attacked in July 1551 and the entire population of 5,000 people taken off into slavery. This was a serious problem for Europe, especially in the Mediterranean countries, but also for Britain and even Iceland. Current estimates suggest that the number of Europeans captured and taken to Africa numbered in the millions. The Barbary pirates attacked shipping as well as land and were in the habit of taking the crews of ships and then just leaving the ships drifting on the ocean. In Britain, for instance, the fishing industry was under serious threat in the 17th century because men dared not put to sea in the North Sea or the English Channel for fear of being captured by slavers. On land, some coastal districts of Spain became practically deserted because people feared to live there. From Venice in the north to Malaga in the south, whole swathes of the European coast became deserted because those living there were always at the risk of slavers descending on their villages and taking them off to Africa. The sack of Baltimore in Ireland gives one good example of what was going on at that time. The entire population was removed. Cornwall was in particular danger, being at the end of England, as you might say. For example, at Mounts Bay in Cornwall, 60 men, women and children were taken away. In 1626, St. Cavan was repeatedly attacked and boats out of Lou, Penzance, Mausel and so on were all at risk of being seized by pirates. It was thought at the time that around 60 Barbary men of war ships were prowling the coast of Britain in the 17th century. Sir John Elliot, 
Vice Admiral of Devon, declared that the seas around England seemed to be theirs. We think of Pirate Island as being in the Caribbean, but for a while the Isle of Lundy in the Bristol Channel was held by the Barbary pirates and used as their base. In 1645, another raid by Barbary pirates on the Cornish coast saw 240 men, women and children kidnapped. To keep the slave population stable, around one quarter had to be replaced each year, which for the period from 1580 to 1680 meant around 8,500 new slaves each year, a total of 850,000 in the course of the century. According to one estimate, 7,000 English people were abducted between 1622 to 1644, many of them ships, crews and passengers. But the Corsairs also landed on unguarded beaches, often at night, to snatch the unwary. This was a huge business. The Muslim world needed galley slaves, they needed labourers, they needed people to guard harems, all sorts of people, and they preferred to use Christians rather than Muslims for this. The rulers of the countries of North Africa were entitled to an eighth of all the slaves captured, and these were used for public works. Cervantes, author of Don Quixote, was a slave in Africa for several years before being ransomed. This was another motive for the slave trade. If you could seize well-to-do people, they could be ransomed by their families, sold in effect for money. The rise of the British Navy was in part due to the efforts to combat the Barbary pirates' depredations on the shores of Britain. Samuel Pepys mentions this in his diary. He says... I went to the Fleece Tavern to drink, and there we spent till four o'clock telling stories of Algiers and the manner of the life of slaves there. Captain Mootham and Mr Dawes, who had both been slaves there, did make me fully acquainted with their condition, how they eat nothing but bread and water, how they are beat upon the soles of their feet and bellies at the liberty of their padron, how they are all night called into their master's quarters, and there they lie. The conditions of the white slaves in Africa were sometimes worse than those of the black slaves in the Caribbean and America. Some were routinely castrated to create eunuchs to guard harems. Others were kept as galley slaves, not setting foot ashore for years on end. The ill treatment of these slaves in Africa was a matter of great concern in Europe. How did it come to an end? Well, it's rather unfortunate. The British began to pay tribute to some of the North African countries, in order to prevent the Barbary pirates from visiting their country and seizing their ships. It was guyed up under various terms, but effectively the British were paying not to be molested. This all came to an end for American ships with the American Revolution. They no longer enjoyed the protection that the British had. And so several American merchant ships were seized by pirates in the Mediterranean. This led directly to the founding of the American Navy. It was the Americans who finally put a stop to the efforts of the pirates. It was not until 1830, when France occupied the whole of Algeria, though, that the pirate trade finally came to an end. I think it's fair to say that not one person in a thousand is aware of the fact that African slavers were raiding England for years, at least half a century before the English became involved in raiding Africa for their own slaves. This has been described as cultural amnesia, Images such as this one, black African slaves in the Caribbean, are routinely seen in school and during Black History Month. Images such as this, though, showing white slaves in Africa, are all but unknown. Slavery was endorsed by the Bible and Koran, practised all over the world from ancient times in every continent. It has literally now become a matter, though, of black and white, for all forms of slavery have been forgotten, save that which involves white people enslaving black people. We have over the last few decades in this country been indoctrinated to see slavery as a wicked activity practised by European colonialists, chiefly against the inhabitants of Africa. This false impression is taught in schools and we are given annual top-ups every October during Black History Month. The truth is that at least half a century before England became involved in the capture of slaves in Africa, Slave traders from Africa were carrying off people from England and taking them away to be slaves. History is always far more complex than the simple linear narrative that we learn at school.